The pocket colour is easily one of the most popular mods in the scene today. The smaller form factor than the Game Boy Color and also the novelty of playing coloured games on the Game Boy Pocket is what makes it special. It is also a tricky mod especially if all you're used to is screen swaps and shell swaps. The first ever Pocket Color was created by Hozzy and the whole point of it was to make use of two boards, a pocket and a colour that had been corroded. This is where I made up everyone's favourite name, Poco, half pocket, half colour. However, due to the rising prices of Game Boy boards and also the fact that the top half of the pocket would just become useless, I started working on a replacement bottom board that would mean you wouldn't have to gut a pocket. Now this was kinda a long time ago. Since then, people have made their own replacement board solutions like Bucket Mouse which is my favourite one since it uses new parts. However, having a build of materials to follow and sourcing your own components can be very, very intimidating for a beginner. If you are confident with your skills, I highly suggest giving this one a go as well. My kit is sort of like a middle ground since I developed a flex PCB that holds the two together so you won't need a solder to anything too tricky. If you are following along to make your own Poco, I suggest also following the written guide, which I will put in the description. CPU E boards won't work with this mod since the vias are slightly different. In my kit you will get the bottom Poco board which is already pre-populated except for the headphone jack, DC jack and the DC board. If you want you can add adhesive dome switches to the buttons to make them clicky. The flex board which will attach to all the vias and then the bottom board. The new version of the flex has added stiffener and some battery contacts for the pocket. Make sure everything actually works on the Game Boy Color before you attempt this mod. So first thing we've got to do is the scariest bit, cutting the board in half. I like to use a ruler and a knife to score the board and then snap it carefully. Now you want to score the board right under these black little thingies. Make sure you score along the ruler a couple times to get through the silk screen, solder mask and copper. I suggest removing the Game Boy Color battery contacts just to make it easier. Then we've got a bend and snap. So you bend and snap. Just go backward first, just do it very softly and carefully. With the bottom half, we're going to harvest the headphone jack, the DC jack and the DC board. I'm going to do something a little bit different, so I'm not going to take those. A solder sucker is the best way to do this. I like to add some new leaded solder to the joint and then reflow it and suck it up. This is also a perfect time to clean your DC jack and headphone jack. Now I'm going to remove the IR LEDs from the top and also the little SOT component next to it. And you're going to want to wick all this up or suck it up so it's flat. Because this is where the power switch will be relocated. You also have to remove the power LED since it won't align with the shell. I have a YouTube video on how to add an LED to a pocket and it will work for this also. Now we are going to pre-tin the vias. Now this is something that a lot of people have problems with so I'm going to go through it in depth. I have a picture on the written guide which shows you exactly which vias we are going to tin. The directional vias are the hardest to solder to so we're just going to brush over them with a fiberglass pen. This will help take off the external coating on top of the vias so they are easier to solder to. I personally find adding heat to the vias will do this for me. Make sure your iron is hot. I go to 350 Celsius. Now I also have a video on how to solder to vias but I will go through it here anyway. So what I do is I hold my iron to it, feed a bit of solder and then you can see it is a little bit in it. Now I go over it a few times. Hold your iron to the via for a few seconds, add the solder and then hold it for a few more seconds. I like to make the analogy that it's a cannoli that you want to fill with cream. You don't just want the cream on top, you want it all the way through the shell. So we want the solder all the way through the via so it's a good anchor point for the flex. This is a checkpoint, please clean your soldering iron tip. The vias with the golden rings around them are a lot easier to solder to since they've got more copper exposed so you can heat them better. The other ones just take a little bit more patience to solder to and tin through. 
Here's a tiny example of the solder going all the way through the VR. Now with the flex, first we have to snip off the little bit for the switch. We're going to use that later to help us relocate the switch to the top of the board. Then align the flex first on one side, adding a little bit of solder to anchor it down and then do it to the other side. Once it is all aligned, we can now solder to the vias. Since we tin them already, this bit should be easy. Just make sure you are soldering all the way through to the other side. So hold the eye in there for a few seconds. Once you're done, the board should be flat. There should be no space between the flex and the Game Boy Color PCB. This is something I saw a lot of people didn't do and they're the people who had issues with their build. So make sure it looks like this. Now onto the bottom half of the board. I'm going to use my Safer Charge DC board, which uses a LiPo. The reason I'm doing this is I find AAA batteries don't really give enough juice to this mod. Then using things like a flash cart, you just can't put the brightness very high on the pocket before the AAA start to struggle. I'll be releasing a new video soon, talking all about the Safer Charge board. Now I'm just soldering the headphone jack. This is where you would also solder the DC jack if you are doing a normal mod. Now I won't be soldering battery contacts because I'm not using them, but you won't be adding them now. You need to add them after you do the flex. Now to align the flex, I'm just gonna show you, if you put it in the shell, you will see that you only need to expose a few millimeters of the copper pads. So that's exactly how I'm going to do it. First, of course, I'm going to solder one of each side so then I can use those as anchor points and then align the board so it's just exposed by a few millimeters. Then I'm going to put it back in the shell just to show the alignment and to make sure it's pretty good and then we can solder the rest. The extra wires you see at the bottom are due to my LiPo board. With the new rigid flex, you can just fold this a tiny little bit, just so it's like almost like a spring, so it can bend and fit in the shell. This will give you a bit more give, so if you didn't align it properly, it will be fine. Now back to soldering the flex to the bottom board, you just wanna make sure you go over everything Make sure you have a really good connection between the two. If you're following along with the written guide, you'll see this is where if you were using the battery contacts, you would put some capped on tape over these pads after you've finished soldering them because the battery contact will actually touch this area and you don't want anything to short. To reposition the switch, first you have to desolder it and then solder it to the flex that we just cut off. There will be a bit of an adhesive in the kit that you put to the back of it or you can just use some leftover adhesive from a screen install. Then following the written guide, you can see you just have to solder to the C and the 3, and then solder a wire between that and where the original switch was. I suggest using around 38 gauge wire. The wire I'm using here is probably a little bit too thick. If you use any thicker wire, then you will have issues probably when you close the shell. Now for the normal stuff like adding a screen and the shell. I recommend a funny playing shell and also a Q5 OSD IPS display for the Game Boy Color. I suggest these as it will just drop in and it will make your life a lot easier. I used a Cloud Game Store shell and I had to cut it. Now the reason I recommend the OSD kit is because it has controls where you can position the X and Y positions of the screen so you can make sure it fits in the display window. Because after all, we are putting a Game Boy Color in a pocket and some bits don't align perfectly like the screen. So being able to reposition the screen by using controls is just a lot easier. Now what I'm doing right here is a sanity check. I'm just making sure the screen works and the device actually works itself. So I'm using my safer charge board so I can use a USB-C to boot the device. But if you're using batteries, 
I recommend picking up a AA battery box with alligator clips. You should probably have one of these if you don't have a power supply as it makes things like testing screens a lot easier. And a little bit of self promo, I sell those on my site along with the fiberglass pen and also the capped on tape because these are things I actually use so I only sell stuff I actually use and trust. And the screen works and we have power. A little bit more self promo, I'm just going to go on Modded Game Boy Club where I have all the references for all the Game Boy devices and I'm just going to jump in the, to the Game Boy Color section and see which vias I need to solder to for the on-screen display to controls. After that, I'm just going to test everything works and what I'm going to do is it, what I call a dry install which is without screwing all the screws in. So I'm just going to close up everything and test that the controls work. If you're using triple A's, this is where you would put them in so you can actually turn on the device. I'm using Orange Glow's test cart and also their better button test ROM which I will link in the description. This is my favorite button test ROM because it makes little beeps when you press the button so you know your sound's also working. Now that I have tested everything, the sound, the buttons and the screen, it's time to screw it all together. Oh, and don't forget the little power switch plastic thing because I almost forgot it myself. To bring up the on-screen display controls, all you need to do is hold down select A and B at the same time. Then you need to navigate through the menu, change your V position, H position, and then you can change the brightness if you want. And then of course you can turn off the logo color because you can't see it anyway. And then you can change the pixel effect and all that kind of stuff. If you want to support me, please consider using code NatalieTheNerd at RetroModding.com, RetroGameRepairShop.com, ZLabs.com and ExtremeRate.com. All my socials are linked on NatalieTheNerd.card.co. On Instagram Reels, you can check out my series Nat's Lab, where I share some useful information and tips on how to solder and how to mod things. All the topics come from the community, people asking me for tips and tricks and just some useful knowledge on how to do certain things. Thanks for all your support and I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world.